couple of old steel pennies recently sold for over $500,000. But why are these coins worth so much to collectors? And more importantly, how can you tell if you might have one of these in your collection? Well, the best place to start this coin story is probably around 1941, a full three years before it was actually struck, where the domino pieces that led to the creation of this coin steadily being put into place. The conflict in Europe had now been raging for nearly full two years, but the United States had at least officially remained neutral up to this point. However, for the Roosevelt administration, it seems that the writing was on the wall and the supply priorities and allocation board was created to track mining, production and supply of especially gasoline, rubber, copper, nickel and other crucial resources that would be needed for the production of ships, aircraft, shell casings and the like. The US Mint was notified that their supply of copper, tin and nickel would become restricted and that they would have to find ways to severely curtail or eliminate altogether the use of these metals. With that, a series of experiments began at the Mint to try and eliminate primarily the use of copper as well as tin to produce the Lincoln penny. Although the Jefferson nickel was also affected by this and hence the silver wartime nickels that came about later on. The initial efforts, however, focused on producing a stainless steel penny, but this was soon proved to be futile and from there it spiraled out into a dizzying array of experimental coins, including a tin alloy penny, a copper weld experiment, aluminium as well as brass coins to more outlandish trials including impregnated paper, zinc alloys, resin, glass as well as a wide array of different plastics were all tested in an attempt to find a replacement for the copper penny. Several of these coins have come to market over the years including an experimental amber glass scent from 1942 that was authenticated and graded by PCGS as proof 64 and sold at auction in 2017 for $70,500. The dies used to create most of these experimental coins were created by John Sinnock, the chief engraver of the US Mint at that time, and used the obverse design that was copied from the Colombian two centavo coin, featuring the right-facing bust of Colombia or liberty if you will, same difference really, with the words liberty and justice at either sides and the date below. The reverse die was instead adopted from a Washington Memorial Medalet from around 1860, keeping only the reef and replacing the epithet inscription on that piece with the words United States Mint in three lines. This was done to avoid the possibility of fraud by outside contractors and and any possible chance of mistaking the experimental coins with an actual circulating coin of the day. But eventually, through all of this, the men settled on zinc-coated steel planchets to replace the copper and tin used in wheat scents. This freed up several tons of copper for production in 1943, by which time the US had officially joined the war in an effort to defeat the Axis powers of Japan, Germany and Italy. Italy as well as their allies. And so, in 1943, the steel penny was officially put into circulation. But not everyone was exactly happy about it. In fact, one of the most common complaints received was the fact that, when new, the steel scent was easily mistaken for a new silver dime instead by the absent-minded. And in fact, the mint itself was not even immune to this mistake, as several silver scents were accidentally minted as well, where a silver dime planchet was struck in a penny press. One just such a coin was sold in 2013, graded by NGC as AU50 for $15,275. There were even supposed attempts by the men to resolve this issue by darkening the steel scent using chemical treatments or deposits of antimony in the zinc alloy. But these trials proved to be 
unreliable, expensive, and ultimately remained unadopted on a larger scale. The three working men's of Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco would then go on to strike over a billion of these steel cents in 1943, with almost 685 million of those alone coming from Philadelphia before then returning to the usual bronze coins again in 1944. As an interesting aside, and the way to bring back the story full circle, in a way, was the fact that a number of spent shell casings were actually delivered to the mint to be melted down and turned into coins. This would be the case for the next several years. Some of these coins were picked out and then kept as special souvenirs. So now the US mint was making pennies from copper once again, but they still had a large amount of zinc coated steel planchets left over from 1943. Most of these would end up being used to strike coins for foreign countries like the Belgian two franc coin for 1944. Almost 25 million of them in fact. But as is so often the case during times of transition, errors do in fact occur. And just like the copper pennies that were inadvertently struck in 1943, steel cents were created by accident during 1944. As a matter of fact, the only known bronze or shall we say copper 1943 penny from the Denver Mint was sold at auction in early 2021, graded by PCGS as MS64 for a total of $840,000. The working theory is that some of these steel planchets were simply stuck in the tote bins used to feed the minting press with blank planchets. And when the next year's copper planchets were then dumped in, the older blanks simply got knocked loose and were then minted as usual. A coin like this, again from the Denver Mint, was sold in 2016, graded as MS62 by PCGS for $54,050. $50. Which then finally brings us to the two coins I spoke of right at the beginning of this video. The first is a 1944 steel cent transitional era coin from the Philadelphia Mint. Now, because the Belgian two franc coins were also being produced at Philadelphia, it is plausible that some of those blanks found their way into the penny press by accident. Philadelphia certainly has the largest amount of these era coins known for with 25 to 30 coins estimated to exist today. This is a stark contrast to the only seven coins that are known with the demon mark from Denver. This coin is tied for the finest known at a grade of PCGS MS64 and sold for the amount of $108 thousand dollars at auction. And just to illustrate what a dramatic impact the grade and condition of a coin can have on its value, there was another 1944 steel cent also from Philadelphia Mint featured at the exact same auction. This coin though only has a details grade of VF for environmental damage as you can clearly see. It sold on its turn for $13,200. Still not bad but a far cry from over a hundred thousand to be sure. Then we have the highlight of the presentation. The 1944 S zinc coated steel Lincoln cent coin. Also the finest known at a grade of MS66 from PCGS. But this one is one of only two known examples of this era coin with the S mint mark from the San Francisco Mint. The other coin was last seen in an NGC slab graded as XF40 when it sold at auction in 2018 for $49,200. But the coin that we all came here to see is the MS66, formerly a part of the Simpson collection that sold at auction for $408,000. Subscribe to WNN and activate notifications with the bell icon to know when new videos are released. For the world numismatic news, I am Numisman saying thank you for watching. Stay safe, keep collecting, and have a fantastic day.